Today, I just want to talk about the realities of working in big tech. So looking back, it has been pretty much five years now since I started working full time as a software engineer. And when I first started, tech was in like the golden age. It was good perks. People were all talking about how excited they are to join a lot of these bigger tech companies. And at the times, like joining Fang was like almost always the thing that a lot of people had in mind. Like I worked on many different projects, had a team switch, switched projects. So yeah, when the pandemic first hit, like all these bigger tech companies were like, oh yeah, here, work from home, here's some money, go buy some stuff. Like, hey, we will get through this together. And at the time I was like, wow, like this is why I work for these companies. Like this is the reason why I'm here. Like they actually care about you. They respect you. Like, you know, they really want the best for you. And then fast forward now, it's 2023 like we just got through some of the worst like you know inflations like the tech recessions like layoffs and now it's like they switched 180 it's like oh now we are moving back into the office like oh let's cut some of the perks like, like just kidding like some of these perks are no longer available for you anymore like you don't get a lot of bargain anymore Your economy's not so good it's just it's a tough time. We're not going to give you much more. We're going to give you more layoff and stuff like that. So the economy and the situation definitely changed so much in the past, like, you know, four years or so. Like, I can definitely sense a lot of these changes in my experience. So starting off the year, like, it wasn't so good. Like, there has been a lot of news. Like, people were always talking about. I remember just, like, chatting with coworkers. Like, hey, like, I, I would hear coworkers messaging me. Like, hey, did you see that Wall Street Journal? Like, I was like, what journal? Like, what, what? And then I read it and like, oh, there's apparently to be a leak about like, there's gonna be a layoff. Whereas the leadership never really openly talked about a lot of these things with us. So it kind of came out of nowhere. And yeah, it was like a really hard time for a lot of people. Like, even though I survived the layoff, you still have this uh, survivor skill. Cause like, you know, I'm on the younger side. I don't really have a mortgage or car loan. And many other people are here working and they might have those things and they might be better performers than me but when there's a layoff and anyone has a chance to get laid off so it's really like random and scary to think about like looking back like especially this year alone it has been a really stressful time i feel like a lot of people like play this image of like oh being a software engineer is really easy and working at these bigger tech companies like oh smooth and chill like yeah for sure like some teams might be like that but so far, like my experience so far has been like actually very stressful. And over times, like I really look at my job and my company as a whole is kind of like, when do I get to rest? Because I, a lot of times like projects keep happening. They, they're paying you here to do a job. So the only time you can really take a break or step back is like the weekend or when you go on vacation. Projects is like never stopping for a lot of these teams that's on like high priority or high pressure teams. So it's like a lot of people are working towards a promotion, you're working towards the next level. They always expect you to get to the next level. So you are constantly working a lot of hours and a lot of times it's not very healthy and it can be really draining. So that's like the reality so far, at least from my experience. And so far, like we go, I also been through a lot of reworks, sometimes also project cuts. And this also creates a stress on a lot of my coworkers, like people that I have worked with. Because when you add those situations, you actually at a higher risk of being laid off if there's another round of layoff. So those are some of the psychological burden that not many people might be talking about. Like, hey, like sure it's pretty feels pretty prestige like working at these bigger tech companies when the time is right, when the you know economy is going great, like oh amazing perks, high pay, but if you really think about it, like the amount of hour that you might have to put it into is like really, really much compared to some of other medium sized companies who may not be as intensive. I hear like crazy on call stories as well. Like for me, like the on call is actually really, really busy. Like you not only have to deliver what you have promised to, but you also have to take on additional responsibilities. Everything could be breaking down. Like you could be getting pain, like in the middle of the night. Like it's just a stressful setting. So I would say like, yeah, like, you know, working at these companies is like amazing. Like it's, you, if you want to find a team that's more relaxed and laid back, you can. But if you also want to get to the next level, 
A lot of times it's all about performing at the next level for a period of time before they are willing to promote you. And there's a lot of more things that go into it too, like opportunities, like are you on the right projects, like are you taking on the right leadership roles, like what are your impacts? So like impact matrix is something that a lot of times like you have to focus on if you want to get to the next level. So there are things beyond just Oh yeah, I can code, I can write good programming. So that's something that a lot of people might not realize and definitely you want to pay attention to those as well if you are considering. So yeah, another thing that I have been doing continuously is definitely continuous learning. Like learning never really stops. Like, you know, you always want to know what's the right thing to do something. And especially when you switch projects or teams, like there's the new tech stack that you also have to familiarize yourself with. And there's an expectation. I remember when I first switched into Android programming, like I was like, oh, you know, this is fine. Like, you know, I'm, I'm switching to a new tech stack. Like I can just like take my time. And <laughs> that was very naive of me. Like these companies want you to be able to pick up these things really, really fast. And you actually get hurt on your rating if you don't pick up certain things like in a reasonable amount of time. Of course, I don't know how they define these reasonable amount of time. So you definitely want to be careful. For example, when I joined my team, and become an Android developers. I was the only Android dev on my team. I guess that's the reason why they backfill me in. But it's also really hard when you get into a whole code base that's like unfamiliar and you have no idea how something works and you're the only person on the team as well. Asking questions almost becomes like really hard. So like, you know, you always need to be aware of that. Like having good senior people on the team who are actually familiar with the tech stack is a plus. You know, a lot of these cases can help you accelerate your progress a lot so i would say like that's something that uh, i look back and uh, i learned like maybe i wouldn't rush into the project or you know i would consider another role but yeah over time it really becomes a point to me like hey like when does this end because at times like oh when the project is going right like everything is aligning like you're getting very productive and you're being very efficient like it's a very good feeling and you know at those times you just put in the hours like it's kind of like the saying, hey, if you really enjoy doing, doing something, it doesn't feel like work. Yeah, I, I can definitely relate to that. Like, you know, there are periods of time where I'm just grinding, trying to get to the next level. Like, yeah, like, it's true. Like, but to an extent, because if it never stop and you keep having to do this, like, is it sustainable? Like, at a certain time, you might feel like, oh, I need to take a break. I need to take a step back. But will your manager let you do that? Or will they keep giving you tasks? Like, is taking PTO the only option at the time? Like, what if you don't have vacation? Like, what if you now in the mood to do such a thing because you're always in the grinding mindset. So like, that's something that I really have learned my career, my experience so far as a software engineer is the fact that you really have to pace yourself in a lot of times and definitely take breaks like over the weekends, try not to work so much outside of work so you can really have this peace of mind and not really go insane about certain things. And uh, another thing I want to share is like, yeah, like a lot of times I also don't like the project. Like that's, that's a fact. And a lot of time it's hard, especially coming on as a new member, like you expect it to do what they are telling you to do. And as you grow into more junior, mid-level, senior, like then you become more of a role that you kind of get to decide what you want to work on. And that's, that's good and bad at the same time because now you have to deliver what you promised. And if you accidentally said something like, hey, like, let me take a look. They expect you to be able to do all these things. Even though like if you have more tenure or like more senior on the team, like maybe at times you still feel like, oh, this project isn't aligning with like my long-term career goal. So maybe that's the time when you switch, but you might become comfortable with the team. Like you might have a good colleague, like good manager, then you might not necessarily want to switch, but you really have to ask yourself like, what are you doing all these for? Like, do you want to enjoy it or are you just here for the social aspects? And maybe those will also be a determined factor of like whether you want to switch teams, switch company, or keep going. But yeah, I, I really remember when I first started my career, like I was really like thinking about like, oh, maybe this isn't right. Like, I just don't know what's going on. Like maybe this project is too hard. Like, how do I even get started? Like all these thoughts, like, you know, like I still get them sometimes, but over the years, like definitely like confidence, like becoming more familiar with the technology helped. Yeah, I would say like overall, this what, this video hasn't really been focusing about like 2023, but it's like, a, it's more catered towards like my whole career. But I would say like this year so far, definitely has been a very emotional draining year. Like 
so much stuff is going around you like you know the colleagues the teammates like either being affected by layoff or always talking about these like layoff topics and then you also have a lot of stuff that you want to do but yeah i would say like 2023 has been a very very interesting year like so much has going on like the gpt technology the tech recessions like there has been so many new discoveries that's going to really change the dynamic of software engineer like many people also worried about like ai replacing their job and stuff like that but i would say like before it can happen it's still going to take some time for those tools to be built to be ready of course like many people say like oh we are actually closer than it might seem but there's still some gap for a lot of the fields so yeah, that also creates a lot of opportunities. I mean, overall, I would say like, so far it has been a pretty exciting year and definitely want to shine some light about like, you know, what it's like working at a big tech and it's not all so bright all the time. So, so yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, yeah, I'm glad uh, you guys are able to hear me talk about all this and hopefully it was helpful.